And that's the whole part of this development process. You know, no one's done it. So we don't know what the perfect route to completion is. You know, aerospace companies have been working for decades, but they don't know how to get this new aircraft into the air. Hi, I'm Tandy Ngoma. I'm the head of vehicle functional design here at Vertical. My department basically operates in the aircraft systems safety and modelling sphere. So we've taken some teams that were previously focused on the powertrain units and we've pulled them up um, to give more integrated systems consideration. And then we look at the level one aircraft systems and safety work that looks at decomposing commercial and regulatory requirements. So my team, we start in the development cycle. Um, we're really trying to take a systems engineering approach. So there's a common practice of using the systems engineering V, which starts at the top of the development. And then you work down. So you start at the top level aircraft, a stick view, what are your concepts and how do you build down? And then you set a series of requirements that go down to system level and you keep flowing down until you get to your actual items, your build, and then you come back up the other side. So as you go down, it's you go into the detail um, at the smaller individual components and then you bring it back up. So you go down from aircraft to system to component and then you come back up, okay, I've built my component, now I need to test it at a component level, at a system level, at an aircraft level to make sure it all does what we want it to do. And so from my team, we specify what we need at an aircraft level. Like I said, taking in all the inputs from what is the commercial and business need, what our safety needs, what are our regulatory needs, what are our operational needs, and then we flow that through to the teams. Obviously nothing is perfect, so there's an, it's an iterative process, we get some bottom-up feedback as well, and we try and make sure that we incorporate that, and we do that through validating those requirements that we've initially set to make sure that they are actually achievable. My safety team focuses on the functional safety, zonal safety, and particular risks across the aircraft. So we have to do a lot of work with all of the systems teams to analyse all the areas and classify them in terms of catastrophic and hazardous failures um, and look at how we mitigate against them. The safety practice doesn't just happen at the very beginning in the development stage. We don't just do an a safety assessment and stop. We do an initial assessment and then we iterate through. So we'll do a functional hazard assessment to start with when we don't have a good idea of the design. And as we develop through, we'll start to do a preliminary safety assessment, then the formal safety assessment towards the end with a lot of iterations across the scope of the full aircraft development cycle. So at each phase of these cycles, we have different activities and deliverables, including zonal safety analysis and particular risk analysis that happens as we develop the design and we get into more detail. The approach is to learn and we shouldn't be scared of failure, you know, we learn from that. So if we make a mistake, because the culture here that we're trying to develop is we hold our hands up um, and it's not just one person's mistake, is we, we've gone down a path, we've learned from it, maybe that one didn't work, great, let's just get back on track, let's have a conversation, let's, you know, try and shift our direction. And that's the whole part of this development process, you know, no one's done it, so we don't know what the perfect route to completion is. You know, aerospace companies have been working for decades, but they don't know how to get this new aircraft into the air. And so it's a learning process, it's a learning internally and it's learning externally externally with our customers, with the regulators, we're constantly having conversations about what, what do we need to shift, how can we change our approach, how can we innovate, not just with our novel technology, but also how can we innovate how we engage with the authorities and with our customers. Yeah, trace business is massive. It's important because it allows us to look through from top to bottom in our development and understand if we've actually got completeness and coverage across our design. So have we covered every aspect that we think we need to cover? And is that correct? Do we have the right answers there? And we can trace that down. You know, when we're making a decision at the bottom, it allows our engineers to understand how we actually met the commercial need that the business is going for. You know, if we want to fly the aircraft a certain range, is a decision we're making on the battery you know, energy density. If we have traceability, those engineers can look back up and understand the impact of that decision they're making. If we're doing a trade-off, we can understand, okay, this is a really high risk um, or critical performance factor. We should really engage the wider stakeholders to understand their impacts. And so having that traceability allows us to be very clear on the different elements of design um, and the completeness of the work that we're doing. I, I work at Vertical because we are the only European EV toll company remaining. It's such an exciting project. You get to be a part of what could be one of the first certified EV toll aircraft in the world. It's not just, oh, we're doing another iteration of something that has existed. This has never existed. And so you get to be part of something, you get to be a part of aviation history.